Hi viewers, welcome to the 12th month anniversary of Stay Awesome Van Life. We have a Q&A session today. All your answers from social media and your posts will be answered in this video Hello, under 30 minutes. Brisbane River, until you reach the sea, deposit there the filthy stuff the city casts in thee, and tell all the fish that you make sick until the aldermen agree to quit their post or leave the coast or lay the blame on thee. And if they won't go thither, in spite of what you say, then let their bodies wither all over Morton Bay. <laughs> uh, good morning from Brisbane. The hell? I just looked there, so your lagoon table is also pretty good if you're filming, I tell you. You can put the tripod on the lagoon table and you can move it around easily wherever you want. That's what I'm doing now. So you can add it to your filming. Yeah, so it's a pretty good uh, extra. Yeah, so Silvertail's been very good. No barking. No barking. No pooing in the van. No mess. Hey, Silvertail. So there you go. When people ask what's the best van dog, here it is here. Stuffed van dog. Things are bad when you've only got a stuffed dog with you. <laughs> oh, gee. I don't know, I might have to conduct interviews or something for a co-star. <laughs> I got some guy, he, he, oh you're insensitive, you did a video on a tsunami and you had no compassion at all for what happened. I was 2,000 kilometres away or 2,000 miles away on Sunshine Coast Beach, surrounded by people at vantage points waiting for the tsunami to reach our shores and I actually didn't even go there for that that was just by the off chance that happened while I was uh, up here so we're on the way up so um, yeah so don't bloody talk to me like I'm some sort of vulture You're ready for the next catastrophe to come to get a few views no I'm not but if I'm there and something like that happens obviously I've got to try and do my filming around that and create a story for you guys so you're not just sitting there looking at a blank screen and yeah there's a lot of work involved you've got no idea i've just had to drive again all the way from brisbane to the gold coast on my own oh, well, with silver tail do all this filming on my own do all the editing on my own do all the posting on my own and then maybe promote it on facebook i don't do instagram that much but i do a little bit um, yeah, and then uh, you get these, um, yeah, I've already done a video on them, van life trolls, and they're just ready, they're like a, um, they're like a hawk in the trees, they're waiting for you to do one thing that they can criticise you for, and they come swooping down with some ridiculous comment, and half the time they haven't even watched the video. They just look at the thumbnail and go, oh, that's it, you know, oh, that's it, you know, I've got you. And then, like I've said before, you look at their Facebook page, and a lot of them are on, like, Van Life Australia, because I'm in Australia, and they do nothing. All they do is, like, post a, a negative comment every now and again. They've never put a picture up or whatever. I've gone on about this. They've never actually made a video, so they don't even know what efforts involved. They haven't lift their finger off their butt for how long and then they've got the audacity to come on and give you criticism i mean unwarranted so anyway i'm not going to cop it get stuffed i'm going to keep doing these videos no one's going to stop me if you don't want to watch the videos piss off that's all i'm going to say and if you don't want it, yeah if you don't like it you can just piss off and watch something else there's plenty of other van life videos online you don't have to watch mine you don't have to but if you want something different, I've got some absurdic humour combined with some unique spots. And yeah, it's quite interesting. But yeah, so anyway, all those negative noddies, go and get stuffed. <laughs> uh, Google search for van life trolls. And my, my video come up, believe it or not, I haven't had that many hits on it, but it come up. And then there was other guys, so really they say once you get trolls, that means you, you must be doing something right. You're starting to get a bit of success then because people are starting to react to your videos, so hopefully that's the case. Um, yeah, I looked back at my first video. Now, my first video was the day I bought the van. Now, I bought the van and I went, I drove home with it and 
the car yard, they can be real tight asses, eh? Like, on the car yard, I said, hey, mate, where's the spare key? Oh, it comes what it comes with. He wouldn't, instead of just saying no, he said it comes what it comes with. So anyway, that sort of meant there was one key. So when I've got, I've got one key. And then I've done a little bit of a video on getting a key cut and all that, because everyone should have two keys at least, as you know. Yeah, so getting back on track. Um, yeah, when I bought the van. Now, this is a year ago now. I actually paid an extra 1400 I think, for a warranty. But I haven't had to use it yet. But I've had a few little tinkery problems that I've managed to get around myself. Uh, I did have the door alarm thing that sort of, oh, it's sort of like a, a haunting project, that one. Um, the car yard, oh yeah, yeah, just bring it around, we'll fix that. Come out with a piece of sandpaper and gave it a rub and said, see you later. I thought, geez, that's pretty lousy, isn't it? Yeah, I had to take a day off, you know, and go and do that. And all I did was come out with sandpaper. Um, then I had to read auto manual. Uh, fifth gear, believe it or not, fifth gear, it stays in fifth gear till 80 kilometres an hour. And then it goes over 81 kilometres an hour, it goes to sixth gear. But there's a lot of times where you're doing, say, 80 kilometres an hour, and that's the speed limit, especially when it's roadworks or whatever. You're stuck on five, speed five, when you want to be in speed six. And so that's a little bit tricky. I think they should have actually adjusted the way the um, automatic clocks in at maybe at 82 kilometres an hour or something. And no, actually even less, say 78 kilometres an hour. And that way you'd be in your sixth gear. Because it's very economical in sixth gear and it loves the highway. This thing absolutely loves the highway. It'll do 110, 120 K if whatever the speed limit is. It'll do it easily. It loves the highway. So even with the build, even with a little bit more weight in it, although mind you, I've used different materials and this that are heavy, some that are light. So the whole ceiling's seedy. You can lift it up with your little finger, but it looks beautiful. And you've seen that before anyway. It's another another video, another video. I've got, what well, we must be up to 50 videos now. Um, a lot more attention from this YouTube al algorithm which is a little bit of a disadvantage when you're in Australia. If I was in the United States doing this with the algorithm in the United States with van life, instead of like when I get 100 hits, it'd be like 2,000 hits. Just just the, the numbers, because you've got over like 300 million people in the United States that you're reaching. And in Australia, you've got 30 million tops, 25 locals and 5 million people that are visiting. So you've got 30 million. So they the statistics tell you, and with their algorithm, that you're at a little bit of a disadvantage when you're at a lower density population. So when you hit those like buttons and you subscribe, that brings the algorithm to life in these other countries where you've got 300 million people, what you know, potential viewers. Um, van lost at sea. And there's a reason why I did that. I was putting all this work in, and I wasn't getting the hits. Like, and... You know, there's no point being invisible doing YouTube. But what's the point? And I've shown everyone how to build their van, like all these different products. I've gone to all expense, haven't spared a cent really. And yeah, and then you come to the views and it's just like, oh yeah, I'll have a look at that. No, I won't subscribe, I won't like it or anything. And next, what's the next thing I can look at? And that's all good, I don't mind, but yeah, it would make it easier, put it that way. And that way I could do a lot more content. Sean does all those songs like Stay Awesome and yeah, so uh, mm -hmm. he can awesome. smack that ass. <laughs> stay awesome. Yeah, it's quite a few different yeah. songs Sean did and he's very talented hey, that way. I said, stay listen, awesome. I want a couple of songs for this Just channel I'm going to start. And in five seconds, Flatty came up with those songs. So I'm quite happy about that. So thanks, Sean. Always appreciated. And... Um, yeah, he's flown the coop too. He's living with me and now he's flown the coop, so I'm an empty nester. So that takes a bit of getting used to because he's lived with me from, uh, gee, from when he was nine. No, one week off his 10th birthday, he's lived with me until he was uh, just about 30. I suppose that's a bit too long. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's actually been good. I, I miss him. I miss him not being around. But anyway, you know, you've all got to spread our wings at some point. And yeah, and uh, yeah, and I've had a few people ask me, how come you travel alone and all that? Well, 
it's a bit hard. Um, I've just got this bloke. That's all I've got. That's it. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, it makes it a bit difficult. Um, yeah, so anyway, I suppose it'd be good to bounce off someone and be able to sort of share the experience and probably that chemistry I see, like, in Camper Vibes, my favourite channel, I've said that a few times. The two girls that are in that, they just bounce off each other so well and it's very entertaining. And, yeah, and it's just really, really nice to see that. Yeah, there's other couples out there too, like have been there for a long time, Trent and Ellie, and uh, Eamon and Beck, and you know, if you watch band live videos, you know exactly who I'm talking about. Um, they're high end, they're, 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 they're super professional, they've made enough money to have all the best gear possible, all the airfares and everything to go everywhere, all the boys toys and girls toys and you name it. Um, yeah, so their income stream justifies the content. Because when you smash those likes, or when you subscribe, you make it a lot easier for them to do a million more things. So do the same for me. <laughs> I'm not begging you, I'm just saying, look, think about it. If you really would want to see what this channel's capable of, you smash the likes and you subscribe because you're actually giving it a lift, you're giving it some fuel. But if you just move on and go to the next one, well, you haven't invested anything into it. So, you know, and it's early days now. You can say you're one of the first to subscribe. I love that channel. I was one of the first to subscribe. You know, you could do a bit of sabre rattling. And uh, yeah, that'd be really good, actually. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> well, I was going to put a window in and I had the window on order for over 12 months. And the guy... I was getting a bit annoyed with him because, you know, he kept, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll be here next week. But it turns out he had something horrible happening in his life and his sister had like a brain tumor, I think it was. So I, I don't have any malice for him. He, he was just in a bad situation, you know, like he tried to sort of drag it out. I think a lot of it had to do with, you know, the fact that supply chains are breaking down too with COVID. But this was very early in the piece. And, yeah, so anyway, I, I ditched that idea because it wasn't worth it. I'm not going to wait another year. But I haven't decided. I've, when, when you talk about a sliding door and glass, I always, always think of security because it's one of the first things they smash is that whether to put a fixed sliding glass window in because they seem to go for the ones that have the little slider inside with the um, mosquito netting. They seem to love smashing that little one. And I suppose because it makes less noise and it's easier for them, I don't know. But um, yeah, so when there's always this balance with this van life. Is, oh, well, I put this in. Oh, wait a, wait a minute. What about the security aspect of it all? Because you wouldn't want to leave a van, a very well done up van, in the middle of nowhere where there's not a soul to be found. But there's signs around saying, don't. Uh, leave your car unlocked or don't leave valuables exposed. So the, the whole time, the only other thing you can do is you video. I have video going 24-7. So if anyone comes around the van, if they do anything, I've at least got a proof of identity of who it was around the van. And I could, I've even got audio. So it's pretty good. Some people call it the spy van. <laughs> oh, you parked the spy van near me, did you? But it's always a good idea to do that. It doesn't cost you that much to do. And, um, yeah, I mean, if you want to go low end, you can just get little cameras on magnets and they run for like a week. Just keep putting the cards and the batteries up if you want. But mine just go off the, um, the electrics. And my electrics have been absolutely wonderful. I, I can't talk any more highly of my system. And it's only two 100 amp hour lithium batteries. I'm running a TV, like a TV, I'm running a fridge 24-7, I haven't turned it off since last Christmas. I've got the max fan going most of the time, like 99% of the time, I just leave it go. Um, yeah, it's like, yeah, there's a few things that uh, I'm not worried even if I, it's been raining a bit and I've got a bit of water and some clothes or whatever, I'll turn the fan on and then hang the clothes up and dry them in here. With the, with the max fan on, so it just works out like a clothes dryer. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty handy. The deep sink that I have, 
I use that to for numerous things. I can wash my hair in there if I don't want to feel like just having a shower, I just want to wet my head because it sinks that deep, I can do that. I can just use it to wash clothes even. So I've got a shirt, I've been wearing it and I want it ready for the next day. Put a bit of uh, detergent in there, turn the tap on, squeeze it around a bit, wet it up for heat, rinse it out, hang it up on a clothes, uh, clothes hanger and then turn that little fan on and there's a shirt ready for the next day. Um, yeah, so it's, it's pretty handy. Toilet wise, I've got a cassette toilet. Um, yeah, well, yeah, I try not to use it. I try not to, only in emergencies. Only in utter emergencies. And, yeah, I just don't like the idea. I, I won't carry number twos around the van, no way. No way. And, um, I don't want to have to go do all that dumping stuff. And, oh, yeah, couldn't think of anything worse. Um, yeah, so I haven't totally worked that out yet, but I've just got the cassette toilet. So far, so good. Um, yeah, I know people put nature's heads and all these sort of toilets in, but I just can't justify the space because I've got two beds in here. I've got four showers. I've got three fans. I've got a fridge, a big stand, an upright fridge. Um, cupboard space, under seat storage. Under, I'm sitting right now, I'm sitting on top of where the toilet and the indoor shower are. So, um, yeah, it's really good for each space if you can have three purposes, three options that are ready just for what you have to do. And like I've said in the video, I've got four showers. I've got all these different choices with showers. The main one I seem to use all the time is just the one out in the back. It's the eBay box. It's one off eBay. It's just a box. It's really well made. And, yeah, I have hot and cold water. That's the other thing. I've got hot water there. Um, my water pressure in my lines is always there because I have a Seaflow pump plus an accumulator. It's like a big bubble thing. And it just holds that pressure in the lines. And it's really good because I can not have the um, pump on and just turn the tap on. And, yeah, I've got uh, water pressure there that's really good. And then, as I've shown before, I have two meters I've got a static meter and I also have I'll bring it up now on my phone uh, don't want to do emergency call <laughs> now let me see here okay so I've got the phone up and if you can see that phones up okay I'll go to I'll put in E just for e-flow and there comes the e-flow meter I don't know if you can see that but anyway it's there so I push on the e-flow meter push on it again e-flow comes up waiting it's connecting to the Bluetooth inside the van waiting <laughs> There we go, it says Renault Master at the top. And we've got 72 litres left. Now that's 75 litres plus 10 because I've got 10 litres for the hot water. So that's 85 litres I have this set for. And we're at 84% at the moment with 72 litres. Tells me exactly how many litres I have. And I've done a video on this. But I just absolutely love it because what happens is any any tank, any RV, any any uh, van, if you haven't put a um, tank in and say your tank's buried, that doesn't matter because the actual sensor for this just goes in part of your PEX pipe. So you cut a little bit of your PEX pipe out, you put the sensor in, it's got a little propeller in it. Every time you turn the tap on, it measures every litre that comes out of that, through it passes that sensor. Tells you exactly how many litres you've got in your tank. So, that is absolutely brilliant. The only thing you have to remember, and it's pretty easy to remember, up here it's got like an options thing. So I push that, and you'll see it says reset. So when you fill the tank, you just push reset, and it goes back to 85 litres. And then it counts down from there every litre you use. So it's absolutely excellent. I love it. I've got a list of records. 
Yeah, yeah, so absolutely great. I, I love it. Absolutely love it. So that's another plus that I've put in the van that I've done a video on and it's worth watching and it's going to help people because who wouldn't want that? You know, you really do need to know your water levels. And um, yeah, well, imagine if you're going to cross the Nullarbor Plain and you've got a bit of a, a water leak and you don't know about it and you lose 50% of your water and you go, what's going on here? I've only got 50% and we're only halfway across the Nullarbor. Well, at least then it gives you that alarm in your head to go and check out everything's kosher because you may well have a leak and you can it'll actually let you know that you've got that. So on a safety perspective, it's a really good device. But also too, like I've got a hot water, uh, 10 litre hot water system. Now, I can't run that dry. If I have that on and, I, and it's dry, I'll burn it out. But what I do with that, I only use it for 12 volt. And I mainly just use it if I'm driving along. I'll just turn it on, the DC to DC charger. Keeps everything going. It just, I, wherever I go, it'll have hot water for a few hours. 10 litres of it. You know, I, I hardly use it actually because I, I'm in a hot climate. So there's not much point. But it is nice when you want to do some washing up or whatever. And then the washing up, I've done another video on the grey water tank system. Pretty easy, just have a couple of cradles underneath with the tank, run your plumbing to the top of the tank, so and at the bottom have your drain coming out. Um, yeah, there's a few weird things with all that though, because the camber in the road, most roads, no matter where you are, will, will camber about 30 degrees. So you've got to take that into account. So wherever you put your waste on, and whatever country you're in, put it on the curbside. That way you've got that candle walking on the table. It's nice having a coffee with you. Uh, okay. Sleep. I've got a really good IKEA bed in there. It's got the uh, struts from IKEA. And you may see this ring on my finger. No, I'm not married. But that is an aura ring. O-A-R-A. -A. Aura. It uh, tells you how much sleep you've had, how much um, deep sleep you've had, how much uh, REM sleep you've had. It's absolutely amazing. It, it does all your pulse. It does your your uh, temperature, especially now with everything that's getting around. You know when your temperature's going up, so it tells you. You get a readout as soon as you want it, or in the morning you just go, well, "I wonder how I slept last night. I feel a bit tired." Sometimes it's just psychological. You're not really tired. You've had seven hours sleep or seven and a half hours sleep, and it'll tell you maybe you had an hour and a half deep sleep. And yeah, I didn't realise people we only we only have so much deep sleep. And the REM sleep, that's when you're at your state of sleep where you're dreaming. So I'm dreaming up ideas for stay awesome band life. And it'll be registered on the aura ring. <laughs> hey, well it's been a crazy awesome. twelve months. Gotta stay off. Awesome. We've hit a time yeah. when the world's gone mad <laughs> and the fuel hey, prices you. have gone stay through awesome. the roof. But it won't stay stop awesome. us. We'll keep okay. van lifing away. We'll keep hey. subscribing. Hey. Stay hey. awesome van life. Hint, hey. hint. And we'll have a wonderful following 12 months, hopefully. Got to stay and awesome. yeah, stay safe, stay positive, and stay on top of those fuel costs. We'll have to do a few videos on how to save on fuel. Any tips? Leave them in the comments. We need every tip we can get right now. Enjoy. Well, thanks for your support the last 12 months. If you have any questions that you want answered, put them in the comment section and I will make another video and answer your questions. There you go. <laughs> There's a pretend dog in the background. It's called Sean. Okay, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and stay awesome and enjoy your van life. Forgive me, because I don't ask, oh baby, don't say maybe. Let me touch that ass.